Bodhisattva Vimalakirti was a renowned lay disciple and wealthy patron of Shakyamuni Buddha. The name Vimalakirti means pure reputation. It is said that Vimalakirti would often use the pretense of illness as an opportunity to present well-wishing visitors with spiritual teachings. He used and often shared an in-depth understanding of topics such as the path to liberation and the nature of emptiness. His approach was said to enlighten even advanced bodhisattva members of the Buddha's Sangha as well as laypersons. Vimalakirti is a legendary figure of the teaching of Vimalakirti, a scripture that is included among the classic Mahayana Sutras. Supreme Master Ching Hai, on August 15, 2015, in France, spoke about Vimalakirti's wisdom and his eloquence, which surpassed that of many of the Buddha's monks. Uh, in the Buddha's time, there was a person named Vimalakirti. You heard of him? Vimalakirti, right? Yeah. He's a lay person, lay disciple of the Buddha, but his wisdom so high, his attainment is so huge that all the monks are very, you know, keeping a, a distance, respectful distance. Because he has such an eloquence and such power that uh, some of the monks cannot match him. The teaching of Vimalakirti highlights the inner truth that is available to everyone, independent of either worldly or spiritual status. The main theme of this scripture is non-duality, a concept especially important in Mahayana Buddhism. Basically, it refers to perception that does not distinguish between self and other. Non-duality also means oneness, as in the unity of the individual soul with God. We will now share with you Chapter 9 of the teaching of Vimalakirti, the Dharma Door of Non-Duality, in which Vimalakirti challenges a group of transcendent bodhisattvas to explain how to enter the Dharma Door. The Bodhisattva Aksayamati declared, The dedication of generosity for the sake of attaining omniscience is dualistic. The nature of generosity is itself omniscience, and the nature of omniscience itself is total dedication. Likewise, it is dualistic to dedicate morality, tolerance, effort, meditation, and wisdom for the sake of omniscience. Omniscience is the nature of wisdom, and total dedication is the nature of omniscience. Thus, the entrance into this principle of uniqueness is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Gambira Buddhi declared, It is dualistic to say that voidness is one thing, signlessness another, and wishlessness still another. What is void has no sign. What has no sign has no wish. Where there is no wish, there is no process of thought, mind, or consciousness. To see the doors of all liberations in the door of one liberation is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Santendriya declared, It is dualistic to say Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. The Dharma is itself the nature of the Buddha. The Sangha is itself the nature of the Dharma and all of them are uncompounded. The uncompounded is infinite space, and the processes of all things are equivalent to infinite space. Adjustment to this is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Apratihata Kaksu declared, It is dualistic to refer to aggregates and to the cessation of aggregates. Aggregates themselves are cessation. Why? The egoistic views of aggregates, being unproduced themselves, do not exist ultimately. Hence, such views do not really conceptualize these are aggregates or these aggregates cease. Ultimately, they have no such discriminative constructions and no such conceptualizations. 
Therefore, such views have themselves the nature of cessation. Non-occurrence and non-destruction are the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Subhinyata declared, Physical, verbal, and mental vows do not exist dualistically. Why? These things have the nature of inactivity. The nature of inactivity of the body is the same as the nature of inactivity of speech, whose nature of inactivity is the same as the nature of inactivity of the mind. It is necessary to know and to understand this fact of the ultimate inactivity of all things, for this knowledge is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Punyaksetra declared, it is dualistic to consider actions meritorious, sinful, or unmoving. The non-undertaking of meritorious, sinful, and unmoving actions is not dualistic. The intrinsic nature of all such actions is voidness, wherein ultimately there is neither merit, nor sin, nor non-movement, nor action itself. The non-accomplishment of such actions is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Padma Vyuha declared, Dualism is produced from obsession with self, but true understanding of self does not result in dualism. Who thus abides in non-duality is without ideation, and that absence of ideation is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Sri Garva declared, Duality is constituted by perceptual manifestation. Non-duality is objectlessness. Therefore, non-grasping and non-rejection is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Khandrottara declared, Darkness and light are dualistic, but the absence of both darkness and light is non-duality. Why? At the time of absorption in cessation, there is neither darkness nor light, and likewise with the natures of all things. The entrance into this equanimity is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Rana Mudra Hasta declared, It is dualistic to detest the world and to rejoice in liberation. And neither detesting the world nor rejoicing in liberation is non-duality. Why? Liberation can be found where there is bondage. But where there is ultimately no bondage, where is there need for liberation? The mendicant who is neither bound nor liberated does not experience any like or any dislike, and thus he enters non-duality. The Bodhisattva Manikuttaraja declared, it is dualistic to speak of good paths and bad paths. One who is on the path is not concerned with good or bad paths. Living in such unconcern, he entertains no concept of path or non-path. Understanding the nature of concepts, his mind does not engage in duality. Such is the entrance into non-duality. The Bodhisattva Satyananda declared, it is dualistic to speak of true and false. When one sees truly, one does not ever see any truth. So how could one see falsehood? Why? One does not see with the physical eye. One sees with the eye of wisdom. And with the wisdom eye, one sees only insofar as there is neither sight nor non-sight. There, where there is neither sight nor non-sight, is the entrance into non-duality. When the Bodhisattvas had given their explanations, they all addressed the Crown Prince Manjushri. Manjushri, what is the Bodhisattva's entrance into non-duality? Manjushri replied, Good sirs, you have all spoken well. Nevertheless, all your explanations are themselves dualistic. To know no one teaching, to express nothing, to say nothing, to explain nothing, to announce nothing, to indicate nothing, and to designate nothing. That is the entrance into non-duality. 
Then the Crown Prince Manjushri said to the rich i v i n Vimalakirti, We have all given our own teachings, noble sir. Now, may you elucidate the teaching of the entrance into the principle of non duality. Thereupon, the rich i v i n Vimalakirti kept his silence, saying nothing at all. The Crown Prince Manjushri applauded the rich i v i n Vimalakirti. Excellent, excellent, noble sir. This is indeed the entrance into the non duality of the Bodhisattvas. Here there is no use for syllables, sounds, and ideas. When these teachings had been declared, 5,000 Bodhisattvas entered the door of the Dharma of non duality and attained tolerance of the birthlessness of things. Jubilant viewers, It's been a pleasure to have your company on today's The Teaching of Vimalakirti, Chapter 9, The Dharma Door of Non Duality, Part 2 of 2, on Words of Wisdom.